Uh, the next topic that I wanted to touch on. Friday afternoon, Conference USA puts out their football schedule, and they were one of the last ones to do it, and we talked about this back in December. Like, why in the world would the Pac-12 put out their, you know, their conference schedule right now when you're not going to get any attention for it, right? It was just ridiculous what, what the Pac-12 did. But also, like, there's no set time for anybody to release any kind of schedules, et cetera. So Conference USA puts out their football schedule, and immediately you start getting tweets from Marshall, Southern Miss, and Old Dominion saying that they are leaving the conference and they are going to be playing in the Sun Belt next year. And apparently, according to certain reports, there are different clauses in these contracts to where they don't have to pay a buyout to leave Conference USA, which is absolutely <laughs> insane. So, of course, Middle Tennessee not jumping over to the MAC. Uh, along with Western Kentucky, like they were, you remember us talking about this, about why not stick around and collect your buyout, and then you can yeah. go to the MAC. Uh, if they don't get a buyout, what what was the purpose of them sticking around? So who well, knows? Nothing. And <laughs> I, I would like, I'm very curious how how these contracts are drawn up to where these, these, these teams can leave without paying the buyout. Like, I, that's, that's wild to me. And if that language is in there, Whoever drew that language up needs to be held accountable. Well, they, I will, I will tell you this. If they're employed currently, they need to not be employed. There are, there are four words that you and I say regularly that will work for this instance. There will be lawyers. There certainly will be lawyers. So, yeah, bill, billable hours are going to start oh, hanging yes. up. Who? We need to win the wrong damn business. We should just win the damn attorney. Uh, you, you're probably right. You're probably right. I, too I old to go to law school. I, I can't read. I didn't want to go to law school. <laughs> well, <laughs> I can handle the read. Um, so, so the Sun Belt, uh, it's reported that the divisions have kind of been set for 2022. And let, let me go on and read these off to you. In the West, you've got Louisiana, who just lost Billy Napier. But then you've got Arkansas State, Louisiana Monroe, South Alabama, Texas State, Southern Miss, and Troy. Louisiana, it looks like Louisiana decided who they wanted to be in their division. Because, I was just about to say, that seems like Louisiana handpicked the division. Right. Uh, this, the, is, this is an Alabama situation all over again. Oh, yes. In the East, you have App State, Coastal Carolina, Georgia Southern, Georgia State, Marshall, Old Dominion, and James Madison. All in the East division. Now, Bill Conley, who does the SP Plus numbers for ESPN, he was talking to Stephen Godfrey online, and Godfrey, of course, was talking about uh, this looks like Clay Hilton is playing in a tougher division than he was when he was at USC. And he's not necessarily wrong because Bill Conley ran his preseason numbers. He said, yeah, actually, the East division of the Sun Belt with those teams is actually the toughest division. It is the strongest division in G5, and the West division is actually the worst division. Absolutely unreal! What they how, are doing? How do they? How do they? How do they? Like, how do they explain this? It's all based on location. Just a hundred percent. Hundred percent location to the west. You, you're you're going to the west. Yeah, I mean, think about it. You got uh, Arkansas State, Louisiana, Louisiana Monroe, South Alabama, Texas State, Southern Miss, and Troy, all on one side, so, and in the east. So what this tells you know, me is, let's be very cautious before you start hiring the next Louisiana coach. Uh, basically, yeah. He rolls off He rolls off 10 wins a season three, four years in a row. If you're some big boy G5 school, uh, P5 school, let's be real careful before we just start throwing a lot of money at that guy to be your next day coach. Yes. Now, now I will say this. These things are cyclical, right? Like, it, the East won't yeah, be the strongest but, but division forever. Those, but Some of those are not. Some of those are not. James Madison has been a monster in, in, in the FCS division for a long time. Uh, uh, you know, Marshall, I, Old Dominion, Marshall like they're both only come up. Been really good yeah. uh, for a long time. App State's been really good for a long time. Coastal has only been this level good since um, uh, our boy Jamie Chadwell got there. But like, like it doesn't seem like he's leaving anytime soon right now. So, True. so you know, it's just one of those things where like, how cyclical is it? You know, True. True. It, it seems Some like of all have of the a historic. The, all Data the teams of, of being really good. Yeah, all the teams that that fully invest in football are on the east side 
and the ones that don't really fully invest are on the West. And that that could be a problem. And I could see them. You remember they did this with the legends and the leaders stuff for uh, for yeah. the Big Ten, and then they kind of redrew yeah. it up. Uh, Going to guess that they will probably look at this again, but we'll we'll see about that. This, I mean, that's a that's a hell of a division in the East. <laughs> I got to tell you, I mean, I, that's that's rough. That is rough stuff. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.